Hello, everybody. I said, hello, everybody. It's good to see you all today. Uh, thank you very much for coming. My name is George Davis, and I'm with the Detroit Salt Company. We're your friendly neighborhood salt mine operators. And what we do is uh, uh, make sure that we excavate just enough road salt for the wintertime so that when you need to get to the mall or go see a game in the wintertime, there's plenty of salt on the roads that makes you, helps you to drive safely. Uh, but what's really cool about that is that we actually uh, produce it ourselves. We actually go and excavate that salt right here underneath the city of Detroit and other parts of uh, Wayne County to, uh, uh, to produce this salt. And so we're going to talk a little bit about one of the most friendliest, marvelous, coolest rocks you'll ever know. It's called salt. Everybody say salt, please. All right. Now, salt has a really friendly uh, name for scientific kids. It's called halite. Everybody say, halite. halite. Say it again, halite. halite. This is the best rock you'll ever get to know. Why? Why, 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 why? Well, because number one, you can eat it. Yes, this is the same salt that you see on your dinner table that your mom says, don't put too much of it on. This is the same stuff. Uh, uh, it's also a salt that, that uh, can be used for many other processes, like the colors in your shirt, or for the saline solution, for those of you who wear contacts, like I do. Or, uh, let's see, you can put it in some sort of sodas, and it helps to make other chemicals as well. So salt is, is the wonderful thing that you have to have, and believe it or not, it's the only rock that you really, really need or else, you know, you would, you would uh, not be so well off without it. Uh, anybody like the taste of salt? Anybody like the taste of salt on your popcorn, on your potato chips? Well, one of the cool things about your tongue, your tongue is designed to find uh, certain things. And one of the tastes that it does, it tastes sweet things, it tastes sour things and bitter things, but it, it's really looking for something salty. And you need salt because it's one of those things that you need to live. So let's talk a little bit about this rock. Anybody, let's see, I've got a, a bunch of kids from 1 to 99, it looks like here. So we're going to take the, the under 10-year-old kids. Asking a question, can anybody guess how old this rock is? 99 years, no. Anybody else? 10? 10? No. Sir? 2006? No. Any of you older kids want to guess? 300 million? No. Close, though. Huh? Billions. Okay, you got to come back down a little bit. Well, 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 we'll put it to you this way. This rock is 400 million years old. Everybody say 400 million years old with me. Come on. 400 million years old. So at that time, the land that we are on in Michigan was somewhere out in the Atlantic Ocean through the tectonic plates moving. And so as a result, we were under a shallow sea. And there was a, you know, a period where the sea was salty. So what would happen is that there would be uh, periods where it would get warmer, the water would evaporate, leave salt deposits, and uh, then cool down and more water would come on top of it. For the little kids, we like to say uh, two things, that salt has two parents, the sun and the sea. Say that with me, kids. The sun and the sea. All salt comes from seawater. There is no other place that salt comes from. And so as this evaporation occurred over a couple hundred million years, give or take a hundred million years or so, who's counting? Uh, you know, this left these wonderful deposits here. And then as Michigan moved to where it is currently, uh, it was uh, other layers of salt, other layers of rocks were put on top of it. Limestones, sandstones, dolomite. And so this salt is buried under the city of Detroit and other places, about 1,200 feet below the surface. 
So over near the uh, Ford Rouge plant, uh, the Marathon refinery, uh, that is where the mine is located. And if you go over there, about uh, a little more than 100 years ago in 1906, some guys said, you know, there's some salt kind of in the area. We can kind of taste it here and there. Let's see if we can dig and find it. And so they kept digging 100 feet, 200 feet, 500 feet, 700 feet, 1,000 feet. And finally, down at the 1,200 foot level, give or take a few uh, feet, they found this very pure, very crystalline, almost 99% uh, pure salt. Every now and then we find a little bit of impurities in it, but uh, they're very rare and very, um, uni very unique. Uh, so this salt is there uh, for you, and salt is a part of everything you touch. Uh, maybe a couple other things I'd like to say to you about salt, and let's get into some questions and answers after that. Uh, salt is uh, uh, how civilizations sort of form, because uh, all plants and animals need salt, and so the plants that grow, because they've got the right minerals, including salt, grow, and then the animals who need salt come to the places where the salt is, and they call those salt salt licks. There we go, I heard it over here. And then the, as they came to the salt licks, the hunters said, oh, this is where the animals are going. So let's go over here and then we create a little town because we know there's animals there that we can eat and we can build a civilization. So there's all these wonderful cities around the world that are named with salt in them. Like there's one here in Michigan called, can anybody guess? Right outside of Ann Arbor to the west. Can't hear you. Saline, yes. Saline, Michigan is a place where there was a little outcropping of salt. Uh, there are places around the world like Salzburg, Germany, and uh, uh, there's a couple places in Mexico with salt tied into their names. And so it's just a lot of little salty places around the world. Uh, we're fortunate in Detroit that we don't have a salt name, but we do have a salt mine and it does help us uh, overall in time to, to make sure that we spread salt wherever it needs to go. So with that, I'm gonna stop all the lecturing and I'm gonna ask, have everyone ask me questions and let's see what comes up. So who's got questions? Sir, yes. Uh, what the question is, he wants to know, was it, is it true that in ancient Rome that soldiers uh, who were a part of the Roman army were paid in salt? And that is absolutely true. Uh, salt was used as a currency so that people could use it to eat or trade. Uh, and not only does it mean where we get the term, uh, is this person worth his salt, but it also is where we get the word salary from. Salary is a derivative of a Latin word, salarium, which means salt. Young man, how much salt can you mine in a year? Uh, we, we mine a whole lot of salt. I can't give out the specific number because there's some uh, you know, proprietary information around that, but it's a lot of it. It's enough to do several uh, places here in Michigan as well as a couple other states. So it's, it's a big, big, big number, but I just can't say it, unfortunately, uh, for, for reasons. Other questions? Ma'am, um, she wants to know how are the tunnels built? So initially, we're, we're up at the top, we're drilling down, 1906, Henry Ford hasn't been the automobile yet, the Verners and Strohs people are making sodas, they're going down. We get down here and then we find the salt. And so what happens is that uh, our mining engineers, uh, over time, create tunnels, right? And what they do is they mine a tunnel, but then they leave salt on the sides, and then they turn the tunnel and create new tunnels that make uh, sort of a sprawling maze. As they've done this, what they've uh, created uh, are about seven square miles underneath the metro Detroit area where, there are, where salt has been excavated. They do this in what they call the room and pillar method, where they sort of mine a few feet, then they leave salt to keep a nice pillar up there, and then they continue the tunnels, and that way it becomes a nice sort of structurally sound uh, tunnel labor underneath Detroit. How do, we, how do we get down there? Well, there's a, 
a nice uh, thing. And I would like to invite you to our website, www.detroitsalt.com, which explains this much more fully. But uh, on that piece, there's a, a head frame, and there's a sort of set of pulleys, which are called a, a skip. And in that, on that skip, which uh, goes into what they call a shaft, the shaft goes all the way down to the bottom, which is called a, a collar, so to speak. And the collar is where all the men and gather to go out into the mine. But there's a system, there's two, there's two shafts that go into the mine. One was mined in 1906, a second one in 1922. And everything goes in and out, all men and materials. Have the tunnels ever created every, any sinkholes? The answer is no. And the reason is because, first of all, you're so far down, you're way down uh, in the earth, you've got a lot of you know, material up here. In the, say, the first 100 feet is where we keep uh, the mud or from the last glaciers. So the first 100 feet down is about just strictly mud. It's kind of, we call it the icing on the cake. And then below that is sandstone, limestone, dolomite in several layers until you get to the 1,200 foot level. And so as a result, there's this large, large piece of land that is sort of immovable. And the way we mine it, we make sure that we leave enough structural pillars to keep those things there. A lot of people have the conception of mining salt as though it were mining, say, coal. And coal mines are much more shallow. They don't really go down as far. And then, you know, uh, coal is much more movable material, smushable, mushable, whereas salt is it's a rock. It's hard. It's, it's uh, crystalline. So it, it, it creates a nice, firm structure. So no, there's never been any instance of that here in Detroit. Thank God. So, Other questions? Uh, he asks, uh, are the tunnels ever used for anything else be besides just mining salt? And for us, the answer is no. Uh, uh, in other mines and other places, there are storage of materials and records and other things like that. But in our mind, we don't do that. So. Mm-hmm. Any fossils? Uh, the answer to that is also a no, from what I understand. Uh, we've had researchers who've asked that question. Uh, they'd like to know, are there any fossils down there? We haven't found any, uh, per se. And if so, they would have to be um, in the, not so much in the, the rock-like, uh, uh, like bones and things of that nature, because you're talking about seawater that was sort of, you know, crushed and then pushed down. In this case, what we, we, the only hope we've had of finding anything was that sometimes we'll find, like in the rock, like a bubble of, of air that's kept, that's, that has uh, been captured in there, and there's a jewel of water that you can still find. And so the, the water that we're looking at was somewhere on the surface maybe 350 million years ago, you know. And so we were always kind of like, you know, wow, maybe there's something swimming in there. But every time we've tested it, we've never found anything, so. Other thoughts? Yes, sir. No. We're, we're again, when we talk about that mud that's in the 100 feet, that's also where the Detroit River and the Rouge River set. And so there are not really made any, many, any major water pockets as you go down, any aquifers or anything of that nature. And so it's usually totally dry. The only water that's down there is the water that we run down there through a pipe for any, any of our processing needs. So it's kind of cool. So he asked, are there any tours available at the mine? Unfortunately, the answer to that is no. Uh, uh, years ago, we, there were a lot of changes in the federal laws. And, and for, in order for us to keep the place safe, we have to have a certain standard around uh, visitors and things of that nature. So we try to do as much of this kind of stuff as possible to, to you know, give stuff out to the community. But unfortunately, we're not in the business of giving tours you know, at this time. So, Yes, you sure can. In fact, I, w I meant to bring this around for everybody to see. If I can just do this, pass it out so you can see it. There you go. Can you guys go? Thank you, sir. Yes. Da, da, da. You're welcome. That's cool. As you can see, it's very hard, and but uh, 
uh, you know, crystalline. If you want to rub it, your finger on it and put it in your mouth and taste it, you'll see it's the same stuff that's on your popcorn. <laughs> we like to say that, uh, you know, we're a part of Detroit before the auto industry. And, and that's really true. There was a time before the auto industry uh, happened here uh, that mining salt and other processes were very important. In fact, uh, how the auto industry even becomes uh, a powerful thing here is because of the mining that was taking place in Michigan. Uh, the mining in the UP for iron and copper, people began to use that to make pots and pans. Many of the settlers going west, you know, you have that image of them having those iron stoves. A lot of that was made right here in Michigan. In fact, uh, some of the, the more senior people can remember the uh, old stove that they used to have outside of the state fairground. D Detroit was a metal working capital, and that's how we got to become the uh, auto capital because we could use those metal parts and then mechanize them for other things. So mining is something that I would encourage uh, all the young people to explore. Uh, mining engineers make a lot of money. They come right out of college making about $100,000 a year. So if you uh, have a young one here who's interested in science, consider mining engineering because it's a great field and there's a very few mining engineers in Michigan and we need some, so yeah. Yes, salt is, is, a, is a preservative. Thank you so much for saying that. And it does, you, it's used a lot to uh, preserve food. That's one of the reasons they probably originally opened the mine in the 1900s was because this was before refrigerators. Right, and so meat packing, you had to have the salt to do that. And then eventually refrigeration came in. So, in fact, my grandfather, uh, bless his heart, he's about 95 years old, said that the refrigerator was the best invention ever in his lifetime because he can remember life before that. So salt is a preservative and it will uh, uh, make you, keep your food fresh. I like to tell people that, that salt is used in almost every food. Uh, and, and a case in point, there's even salt to keep pepper fresh. So when you have pepper in a, in a jar, there's usually some salt to kind of keep it fresh as well. So, you know, how about that? <laughs> yeah, many of our families that migrated here from other parts of the world had to have some sort of salt to preserve their food on that journey. And so it is a key element to uh, survival, uh, traversing the oceans. You have to have it to keep everything fresh. So. And uh, oddly enough, at our company, we have a lot of uh, some old world people that have come over. Uh, much like doctors go from hospital to hospital, uh, miners go from mine to mine. And so we've got a number of miners you know, from Michigan. Then we've got some from West Virginia, where there's a lot of mines. And, and there's a number of miners that have come from Poland. And Poland uh, has a really big salt mine there called the Wileczka mine. I'm getting my Polish, you can hear the accent in my voice. The Wileczka mine. And the mine is a wonderful, uh, resplendent, 1,500 year old mine, roughly. They actually have a, a chapel in there that's all carved out of salt with statues of the Virgin Mary and of the Christ and all of these other places, the Stations of the Cross. And uh, even the Pope has gone down there and said Mass in, in that mine. It's just a wonderful thing to see and for you to research, so.